Do Asian Americans have a distinct accent when they speak? This TikTok is going viral and we gotta talk about it. Yeah, let's play a couple of the viral videos from Etymology Nerd as well as a response from Erfton Speaks. They're an Asian American accent. I've had a lot of Asian American friends tell me they can hear one and there is substantial evidence that listeners can identify Asian sounding voices at a rate higher than chance. How no, this is actually so crazy because I know exactly what he means by Asian Americans have an accent. It's like, I can't really explain it, but okay, this might sound crazy, but they low-key sound like white gay men, but without the, all the extra flamboyancy. And I have two examples. But I did a lot of research and it's honestly really difficult to find trees that survive well indoors and also sort of look like this. I wasn't a big fan of fiddly fig plants or ficus plants, which options that I... Filming yourself in public can be super intimidating. And sometimes the best way to feel confident is to watch someone else do it. So here's the uncut raw video that I turned into this video after I messed up a bunch of times. Andrew, TikToks bringing up interesting discussions. I will say this though, Andrew, the linguist subreddit has been discussing this for over a decade on Reddit. But of course, you know, once people make TikToks about it, I guess it's more able to reach a more universal widespread audience. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna uh, talk about whether we think Asian Americans have an accent. What do they mean in this video by what an Asian American accent is? Obviously, Asian Americans are not a monolith and we understand that how people talk is a different a uh, bunch of made up of a bunch of factors on who they grew up with and stuff like that. But regardless, maybe there is some truth to it. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Uh, check out Smile Sauce at SmileLawSauce.com, guys. Get the pre-orders right now. I mean, let's just pop up a bunch of these Reddit threads, Andrew. Somebody said, is there any widespread Asian American dialects similar to African American vernacular or Chicano English? And uh, basically... A bunch of people, Andrew, in the comments section of a variety of TikToks listed these names. Let's just play some examples right now. These are my top five bedroom essentials to make your space more functional and cozy. Starting with probably everybody's favorite noodle dish, carbonara. It's Kenji. Uh, today we're going to make some masaman curry. Everybody has sharded before. Oh, now you want to come back? I'm telling your mom. I did not know it was just diarrhea. How's everyone doing today? Thank you guys for coming back for another video, Blazing Gang. I really appreciate it. Let me let me finish chewing. I'm sorry, this is rude. What flavor is this? Oh, lemonade, my favorite. Hi, this is 17 on 17. It's 17 Joshua. And I'm Vernon. We're here with 17 Magazine to break down our first English single, 2 minus 1. I love cream pizza and I feel like people don't talk about it enough, but it is so good. I recently found my new favorite spot to go to, which is Thanks Pizza in Koreatown. Did you know that Asian Americans who are born in the United States all have a very specific accent? And all these individuals speak perfect English, but have distinct differences leading to the Asian American accent. And this accent is unique to Korean as well as Chinese Americans who moved to the United States at a young age or who were born here. And some of the things that's characteristic of the Asian American accent is its tone, which is often monotone. And it has a reputation of being flat compared to other populations who who speak English. And other features include increased pause between words as well as a jerkier speech overall. And some people have even noticed that when we pronounce our K's, it tend to be a lot more softer. For example, when I say cracks or takes, I tend to not emphasize the K. And maybe it's something that I do in particular, but it's something that I do without thinking. And much of this might be influenced by how Asian Americans grew up in America. For example, we learned a lot of our languages or how we pronounce things from our parents and Asian language have unique features. For instance, languages like Mandarin is syllable time, meaning that every single syllable takes roughly the same amount of time. And this could have transferred over to how many Asian Americans now speak. And what's really interesting is that studies have shown that people can tell exactly if you're Asian or not by listening only to your speech. And I want to know if you guys can tell that I'm Asian American just by listening to my voice. Okay, Andrew, we just can't look at any more examples real quick, man. What do you think? Yes, no, just give the people your answer. All right, first of all, there is some truth, but I don't like how Erfton said it. I really, I think that essentially it was kind of offensive the way he was wording it. And I don't think he is a linguist. I don't think he's an expert in this field, but he just had an ex, uh, he just had an observation from his experience on TikTok. Here's the truth. I think a lot of people who say Asian Americans have an accent, they are thinking about one or two accents and they might also be getting some Asian Americans confused with Asians from Asia, like Asian immigrant right. accents, because obviously if you speak English at a, as a second or third language, yeah, you're probably gonna speak English with an accent. Like we all know the the broke, like the Hong Kong accent. It's like, oh my God, the Uncle Roger, da, da, da. Like that right. doesn't actually count as an Asian American accent. That is an immigrant But sometimes it gets English. mixed together though. 
Like, let's say, for example, somebody came from a Cantonese-speaking region, whether that's Malaysia or Hong Kong, and then they moved to, like, Irvine, California, or the Bay Area when they're, like, 10. Now they've got an Asian-Asian accent and the probably the most typical Asian-American accent that people are referring to, which, in my opinion, and this is what Irfton Speaks is referring to, Andrew, I would call that a upper-middle-class East Asian, either Irvine or, like, Cupertino accent. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound like... The accent that they're referring to doesn't sound like it was been in... Uh, Houston in, or uh, ATL. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a middle to lower middle class accent or like a working class accent. No, it no, is no. the opposite of the working class accent. Now, I think we all know some Asian people who talk like that, but is that really the Asian American accent? I don't know. Yeah, I think that that's what's so interesting about it. We're going to get into the comments section. Um, anyway, let's just get into our quick reasons why, if we partially agree with both etymology nerd and, you know, I guess I could see where Earthton Speaks is coming from, but I disagree with him. But it's like, I guess what I'm saying is, I think that a lot of Asians, they do, are they're the first generation in their family to be a native English speaker. Do you agree? So obviously, they're basically also growing up around a lot of people who are first generation native English speakers. So Nobody's going to bring up why they speak a certain way. As, like, I guess what I'm saying is their social circles are not going to have as much questioning of their speech patterns as they would have if they grew up around exclusively white or black people. Sure. Yes, uh, obviously just the community and like who they take after and who you want to emulate and the music you listen to and the even like the celebrities that you grow up being kind of drawn to. Enamored by. Yeah, that's going to affect your accent too. I always say... You try to, there's two options, right? There's one where it's your local environment. That's just the other fish in your fishbowl, right? But there's also who you see when you look in the mirror. That's the identity that you take on. Anyway, let's just take, get uh, into some of the comments section. Somebody said that every group has an accent. Black people have an accent, like Erfton Speaks, the guy who's accusing Asians of having an accent. He has a black accent. And then also a lot of Hispanics that are first generation English speakers also have a Hispanic accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, other people saying that a lot of Asian Americans, they just have a schoolboy presentation. And, and this is how I would describe it. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, it sounds like hollow or it sounds crisp. It sounds like a TED Talk English. I'll say this. It sounds like a schoolboy presentation. Where, where, with the compression filter. And I was trying to explain to people, if you've ever used Cool Edit Pro or Adobe Premiere or GarageBand, you know how there's like vocal filters and like, uh, you know, you can like compress the sounds so everything, every nothing slurs together, right? Like once it hits a certain decibel range, it collapses. I actually think that that's how Asian Americans speak. Mm. So it's not really like drawn out and things like that. Because like, that's very colloquial to be yes. like, hey, your body like a back row. This ain't what you act. That's, that's what I would imagine is a country white slur. Also, by the way, I think there's a lot of people commenting on TikTok and especially TikTok, Andrew. They don't really have the vocabulary or the depth of understanding to understand speech patterns because they're not linguists but they're making statements like they're a linguist. Right. This is just an observation and they're trying to kind of word it in the simplest way that they know how, but it's not, it's not a fully accurate way. It's kind of like, yo, I see something happening, but I can't describe what's happening, but I know I saw it with my eyes. Right. You know, and I get that. Yeah. If you don't know anything about car design language and you're trying to discuss, uh, tell somebody why a Mercedes looks different from a Japanese car, you don't know anything about like uh, industrial body lines and like hood scoops because you don't have those words in your vocabulary. You're just like, I don't know, one looks more boxy than the other one. I mean, it's almost like people who, I, I don't know a lot about wine or tequila or beer, but when you talk to like a wine expert, they'd be like, oh, it's really rounded and heavy on the top and it's frosty. I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I also think that a lot of Asian Americans learn English ultimately from school or media that they consume. So for everybody that's saying that Asians sound like they're on CNN when they're talking in real life or they're in a theater production, even when they're real life, it's like it's because they that's where they may have learned English from mm -hmm. and develop their uh, influences. I will say this. A lot of people are missing out. Andrew. I remember Ming-Na Wen, who did the English voice of Mulan in 1998 for Disney, Andrew. She said that in 1998, Disney told her that Asian Americans had an accent. Mm. This is 25 years ago. Yeah, I remember ago. hearing that. I remember hearing that. And because Ming-Na Wen, I, apparently her voice... 
the way that it sounds to at least the white people at that time. We're not just talking about a guy like Earthen Speaks. This other people have noticed that it sounds a little bit different. And they were like, oh, that's why. I don't know if that's be you. You tell me if you agree. I kind of see what she's saying, though. Right. Um, anyway, let's just get into some of the funnier comments. Andrew, somebody said that Asian Americans sound whiter than white Americans. And someone said that is because they are trying hard to be white, that they almost overshoot it and be sound whiter than white people. That is actually a hilarious way to put it. I don't... You don't fully agree with yeah. it, but you get where they're coming from, well, right? Well, I think, again, man, when you're growing up and you're consuming media and you kind of choose how you talk, you kind of make subconscious choices about like, oh, that's kind of like cool. Like, why do some... Asian girls sound like Valley girls when nobody in their family ever speaks like that. It's because you pick up that accent from school, from the people that you admire or you feel like you want to be accepted in that group. Just like a lot of Asian dudes who grow up in Brooklyn, they don't sound like these TikTokers, but they just sound like any other Brooklyn guy because that's their group that they're fitting into, you know? Right. Um, and like you said, you sometimes there's people who grow up with like even like a New York accent that aren't even from New York because that's the media they consumed and that's ultimately what they saw when they looked in the mirror. Somebody said, it would. I would say it sounds almost robotic. It sounds like AI voices, but humans, it's stiff, but human at the same time. Of course, these are a bunch of comments. Someone said, it's just a B-Tech accent, which means Business and Technology Education Council because you need to get a B-Tech certification for certain jobs, I guess, in a vocational school. Um, a lot of black people were saying it sounds like a TED Talk voice to me. Um, somebody said a Valley girl accent, but they said, no, it's just the opposite. It's a Valley boy accent, mm. Irvine, Asian English or Berkeley Asians. Um, Andrew, this was an interesting comment. This guy said, nope, this is from an Asian, by the way, generations of demasculization, demasculinization of Asian men, plus self-consciousness and anxiety of being self-aware of that equals the Asian American accent. What do you think of this? Uh, I don't really think that's the reason. I actually don't think that the emasculation of Asian men in media caused Asian dudes to talk like that. I don't think, I don't, I think that's probably ranks like number 10 on the reasons. But you think it could be a reason. I think it's more about where you grow up and who you want to spend time around and how you, who you are raised to believe is the right way to talk. Now, I think possibly there has been some research that, or a lot of people actually at least have observed that they felt like Asians on average might have a higher pitch tone in their voice. And like, there's not as many super low voices in the Asian community. There are some obviously, but there's not like, not that's not the normal voice no, I would for say Asians. That for people would consider black men to have normally a very exactly. low vocal range. Exactly, so yeah. if black guys have lower voices, stereotypically speaking, Asian guys have slightly higher voices, then obviously if black guys are analyzing Asian voices, they're gonna see that possibly as like less bass in your voice or less or less masculine. Right. You know what I mean? Well, for sure on a decibel, like sonic scale, you'd have to say that Asian male voices definitely have less, less bass than black male. Yeah. Voices. I think on, Asian on voices, average, for sure. I think Asian voices possibly in general might have less of that bass, that soul, you know, voice than other Asians. But shout out to Toranaga from Shogun. He got it. So that's why, I, that's why this comment about cultural spacing in the Anglosphere I don't know. I, I think I would rank it a little bit higher than you do. Um, this guy said, I, I, this is another comment that saying that Asians, they can play into the Asian men sometimes play into the feminine side more because it's viewed as very classy and being viewed as very classy is viewed as very high class in a feudalistic society back in the East. Basically saying like talking a certain way could make you just appear to be from a much higher socioeconomic class. In the yeah, West. I think this is a bigger reason than the American media forcing Asian men to talk a certain way. Yeah, I mean, I do think so. Somebody said Asian men sound rich, but not stuck up generational wealth rich. Dude, these are some pretty funny comments. Right, right. But, well, I'm sure what they're referring to is they sound like they don't need money for anything or any expense in their life, but they don't. Awesome talk like, yeah, it's my fair. I've got 75 properties so, in so the So Asian Hamptons. Americans don't talk like poor. <laughs> 
Um, somebody just said it's the tone. It's very distinct. Um, this guy said, I have to disagree because you only showed East Asians who are whitewashed. What about the Southeast Asians, the hood dudes, the gang bangers? Yeah, bro. There's bougie Asians and then there's jungle Asians. It depends on where you were raised. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I think most people are just basing their, they're just thinking of one type of Asian and they're all making Asians a monolith because they're just going off of like, they're going off the upper middle class California no, Asian. Yeah, that's really what they're going because, off of. Because that's the type of Asian to them that is most distinct. Because to most people, and this is the bias in all of these comments, is that if an Asian from Houston talks like a black dude from Houston, then that Asian guy is just buying into being black versus the Asian guy from Irvine that doesn't talk like he's from Houston or a black guy from Houston. Now that guy is the Asian guy. You're saying he, the Irvine, upper middle class, East Asian accent has been more centered as the default. Yes, where obviously we understand that Asian people can sound like all different types of people, but most people are just saying, oh, this one from California. Now, here's the point. There's the truth behind it. California does have the most Asians. So California right. Asians are in a way, in a media sense, are defining what being Asian American means. And that is for some good reason, because they have the most Asian Americans Well, not in only California. do they have the most, but they also have by far, per perhaps even over-indexing another standard deviation, the most representation. Yeah, and they're kind of, and we know this from being a YouTuber in SoCal for t uh, nine plus years, basically the Asian Americans from California kind of define the main asian american experience right now whether or not that's true obviously there's asians all over the world I, i'm just saying that's how it is in media yeah and i would say in media for example like we said aave was like yeah like this is like described as aave or like it was so fool like this is described as like a chicano american accent or like hey man this is described as a mega accent or it's like yeah yeah this is boston it's like every tr tribe it's not that every white Irish person in Boston sounds like uh, Marky Mark or Mark mm. Wahlberg, but that's just like what got put out in the media. Um, somebody just said, you know, I always thought it was a slight overpronunciation, overpronounced, but lacking enunciation somehow. Do you think it's true that Asians sometimes, Andrew, when they speak English, struggle to emote or there's just less emotional range in the voice? In the voice? Yeah, I think culturally uh, there's not as much like, yelling and singing in the house maybe or like i don't know like you know just about who you grow up with right somebody said duh of course asians would speak different just as latinos did they arrived in such large numbers post 1970s they're oftentimes the first native english speakers in their family why wouldn't they sound different right 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 yeah right, of course right. that's pretty logical uh, if you're like a fifth generation ja i would expect you to have sound different than somebody who's second generation um some people were talking about filipinos having a really crazy range uh i looked into this it is true andrew filipinos oftentimes adopt like uh more like if they're in the hood they talk super hood or if they're talking white they talk super white mm -hmm. let's play some clips you blazing filipino Ping. You got a little bit of black in you? Let's get back from a business meeting. I'm gonna make some passive income. Oh, yo, you wanna make some passive yeah, income? Bro, <laughs> residual income. Weird by uh, the phrase, uh, you didn't build that from Obama, um, but it is not an angry book. And um, so. Somebody just said, Andrew, this is the final clip. This is an Asian guy. He said, he's right. If you work in tech or went to a heavy Asian American college, you will hear this accent every day. As a man, you probably would be better off if you don't have this accent. It is what it is. I went to a pretty hood high school, so I don't happen to have it. Mm. <laughs> uh, do you want this accent, Andrew? Do you want to sound like Eric Wang in the video? Yes, no. What are the pros and the cons? Or is it just, man, it just is what it is. Well, no, I don't think I want to talk like that because that's not how I grew up uh, seeing myself. So I guess, but I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, that accent is not like within an Asian context or within a certain like, I guess the fashion world or TikTok world or whatever world that Interior is your, design, right whatever here. is your like social community, that voice is not 
rejected or looked down upon it in might any be way. Elite to yeah, have that. you're not going to get made fun of for that accent at all. But obviously, if you got made fun of at all growing up talking a certain way, then you got checked, and then that was that helped you adapt to the environment differently. You know, so I guess David, what you think? What do you think? Um, I do think that uh, the schoolboy English, the extra crisp compression, like we said, we could pop up a bunch of uh, Adobe Premiere plugins, you know, from Pro Tools or whatever, just to give you guys an idea of uh, how I interpret it in my mind, at least with the T's or the, you know, the S's or the turning up the highs or the mids or the lows or whatever. But I'm saying that, man, yeah, I don't think it's good or it's bad, really, to be honest. No, you don't like it. I can tell. You don't like that voice. I don't like it. Yeah, just say it. Yeah, you don't, don't like don't, the voice. I don't like it. It doesn't like mean it. that everybody's bad, but it's just, it doesn't seem like it's a strong voice. It's stereotypical. It plays into the STEM sort of soft boy stereotype that obviously uh, I feel like it impacts the way Asian American men are treated. But it's crazy because sometimes sometimes people from a group do fit the stereotype. Well, do I think and this is a larger conversation. Does talking like that, is that going to change the culture and make it more acceptable or is that going to slot these Asian guys more in the less masculine lane? Anyways, you guys let me know in the comments down below. Because I think that I don't agree that it's not talking like gay like Erfton said. But so I think he was an overstatement. And so I really don't agree with how he said that. But I understand that, yeah, quite a few Asian guys do talk like this right now. So anyway, guys, kind of a trendy let us way know to what talk. you think. Is, hey, man, talk how you talk. Live your best life by all means, man. But just, yeah, if you ask every, if you make statements like a question with the intonation, with the rising intonation at the end, I wouldn't want to talk like that. I would only want to rise my intonation at the end when I'm legitimately asking a question with a question mark. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Very interesting discussion. There's no right or wrong. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.